Hey everyone, it's your boy Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be looking at the daggers. Uh, so first we have the Adept Claws, we have the Adept Dagger, we have the Adept Dagger Pair, Adept Blood Ladder, Adept Death Givers, and Adept Black Hands. These are all daggers that can be used and leveled up in your Destiny board. If you go to the daggers, uh, you will see that I have a 62 in the Dagger Fighter, um, so I am able to wear all uh, T6 and above. Or T7 and above, my bad. And I do not have some of the abilities unlocked yet. Uh, these abilities are very, very strong. I've seen them used. I've seen them the gameplay with them. Uh, but I do, not, I do not have them activated yet. So what I'm going to be going over is each and every call, uh, or not call, dagger build. Um, each and every dagger ability, uh, in other words. So we're going to first go over the Q. Uh, the Q is going to be the same in every single dagger um, weapon. You're going to have the Sunder Armor and the Assassin's Spirit. Most people use the Sunder Armor, but I'm going to go over each one real quick. The Sunder Armor is an attack dealing 179 physical damage, reduces the target's armor and magic resist by 11 against players and against 16 against mobs, and by 16 against mobs. The Armor Reduction lasts for 8 seconds. Then we have the Assassin's Spirit. Once activated, you gain an Assassin's Spirit. Every 3 seconds, each stack increases your damage by 6%, and it stacks up to three times. But while this ability is activated, you also take 3.846% more damage. This ability can stay toggled on for up to 15 seconds. So if you're going some kind of burst build where you think, you know, you can kind of go for the one shot sort of deal, maybe, maybe you would try this, but you're really not going for that. Uh, most of the time you're going to be using Sunder Armor to reduce their magic resistant armor before you go in for the assassination or uh, if you're playing, you know, Blood Letter Build or Death Givers or a black hands build that is um but those are the abilities there we're going to put this a uh, death givers on real quick and we're going to select the sunder armor uh let's go up to a little bunny over here and let's give it a go so i i know a lot of you guys have probably seen it in action uh but when you press q and you go up to one uh it will have a little purple symbol come up and it'll basically show that you're reducing their magic resist and their armor. So that is the Q on the daggers. Uh, now we're going to be going over the W. Uh, well, I guess, you know what, let's go over the other Q. Just because people don't use it very often, we can still go over it as it may get a buff in the future or, you know, there may become a use for it. So let's look at uh, this Q. As I hit Q, you can see in the top left, it actually increases your damage. Every stack is increasing your damage here. Um, and it just continually goes at three stacks over and over until the timer runs out, which in this it says it goes up to 15 seconds. So uh, that is that Q. Um, we're going to look at the W now. So the W basically is between throwing blades, a dash, and forbidden stab in the early levels. So what I'm going to look at is the um, black hands as they all do have these abilities, the same abilities on the W yet again. But the throwing blades, um, the throw three bl throwing blades in a cone, each blade deals 67 damage. For each enemy hit, you gain a 15% damage buff. And your movement speed is increased by 25% for 5 seconds. Can stack up to 3 times and gains 1 stack for each enemy hit. So, obviously, I'm not going to really have any enemies to hit here as I am just showing you guys the build and going over each ability. Uh, I don't really have an enemy to hit, but... If I were to hit somebody with the throwing blades, you would get the stacks up here. Um, and that's basically what that ability is going to be looking like. Uh, nothing too special. Um, most people do not try throwing blades. Um, dash is next. Everyone pretty much knows the dash, but we're going to use it for your guys' sake. Uh, the dash is pretty much a getaway for most gatherers. Uh, it's used in a lot of PvP of chasing players down. Um, it's used pretty much every time you're playing a dagger build, you go uh, dash. Dash is that... Uh, big of a deal um, occasionally we'll, you'll be using cl uh, chain slash we'll go over that in a second but uh, so we have the dash um, which is going to be your W on all uh, dagger pairs or not dagger pairs but daggers um, just a simple little dash and its cooldown is actually pretty short at 13.75 seconds without any cooldown reduction um, so now we're going to be looking at the next one in line it's forbidden stab a fiendish 
attack, dealing 280 damage, reducing the target's ability to heal by 40% and healing received by 40% for 5 seconds. Actually pretty strong of an ability if you're running uh, 2v2 Hellgates and you for some reason don't want your dash and you think you know you need to reduce their healing. It's actually not a terrible, terrible alternative. Uh, there are better, but the Forbidden Stab isn't terrible. Um, so it is viable and you are able to use it. Uh, when I use Forbidden Stab here... Looks like we're going to be struggling for rabbits today as the rabbits aren't coming out for us. But uh, I was going to show you on a rabbit, but if it doesn't come, there we go. So right there you'll see that the uh, healing is decreased by that little logo that pops up above, or icon that pops up above the rabbit. So that is the forbidden stab. Now we're going to go to the infiltration. Set a destination that you will jump to after a short delay, releasing a smoke bomb at your destination. The bomb deals 89 damage, makes any enemy target in the area sleep for 4.66 seconds. Uh, I have yet to see this really used. Um, yes, it does sound strong, but I have actually not had much experience with this ability. So if you guys can find a use for it, go ahead and do it. Uh, actually, right when you... So let's put this guy to sleep real quick. Okay, so it's a delayed jump, and now he's asleep, right? Uh, he'll actually wake up if it wasn't a rabbit and uh, useless, he would actually wake up in that 4.66 seconds uh, later. But if I were to attack him, he would wake up right away. So this is to maybe you want to put the healer asleep while you beat up on the DPS or the opposite. Um, that is probably what you're going to be finding the infiltration used for at the very least, at the very most, I should say. I actually do not have these unlocked for you, the other two uh, abilities. But uh, Shadow's Edge is a throw a knife in front of you. If it hits an enemy, the enemy will be stunned for 2.44 seconds and you will be pulled behind this enemy. Uh, this is a very, very strong ability. Um, this is one that, let's go into the daggers real quick uh, and scroll down. This is one that you'll notice is, like I said, it's on every weapon, um, no matter you know what weapon you're going for in the daggers. And like I said, it's very, very strong. Uh, people do occasionally go this uh ability and you unlocked it i believe at 75 i think i just saw that i think it was 75 you unlock it or am i thinking thinking of 85 yeah i'm thinking of 85 for chain slash but you actually unlock it at 70 which you know i'm getting there but at 70 you unlock this ability and it is very very strong i've seen it used in 2v2 hellgates and 5v5 hellgates very strong like i just said um but let's see it throws a knife in front of you, hits an enemy, the enemy will be stunned for 2.64 seconds, and you will be pulled behind this enemy like I just read. So, uh, Shadow Edge is good. I won't be able to show it for you guys. Um, it's pretty much exactly what you hear and probably have seen before, so uh, nothing too special there, but it is actually a great alternative if you're not running a dash, because in a way, it is a dash. It's just always in, uh, you know, a going-in sort of dash, so uh, definitely not bad uh, choice. Now let's look at the Chain Slash. The quickly slash through multiple enemies you can continue jumping to the closest enemy in a 8 meter radius for up to 4 times, dealing 380 physical damage to each enemy. While you are slashing through enemies, you are invisible to players. Uh, this is for those of you who pretty much know uh, what League of Legends is. This is pretty much Master Yi um, and his Q. Um, you know, what's, what's it called? Assassin's Strike or something? So this is basically that. Uh, it's very, very strong in like 5v5 Hellgates. Uh, people use it uh, if you're running one of these Assassin builds. Chain Slash is very common in, uh, in F55 Hellgates. Uh, now let's move on to the Ghost Death Givers. Uh, we're going to go one by one through all of these. Uh, they all have a different ease, and I think everyone understands that the Q and W and the passives are always going to be the exact same. Uh, the E is where every item differs. So the Ghost Strike is the difference maker in the Death Givers. Uh, we're going to look at this real quick. The dash is through an enemy dealing... Let's put it on so the ability starts cooling down. Uh, dashes through an enemy dealing 624 magical damage. After the attack, you will become invisible to other players and your subsequent energy costs are reduced by 50% for 3 seconds. If you have 3 Sunder Armor charges on the enemy or 3 Assassin Spirit charges on yourself, the charges are consumed. This ability can be used again immediately. Uh, that is the strongest part, is that second part. Um, that is something that no other abilities really have in common with it in a way because you're actually able to use this ability twice back to back, go invis twice back to back, and do 624 magical damage back to back. And that's just, 
an insane amount of damage and you know that's why death givers right now are you know 125k for uh 4.0 uh death givers that's an insane price for four point or four flat death givers and you know that's why they are the price they are so that's an insane ability uh let's go look at the claws real quick while channeling you root the enemy cancel enemy spell casting and repeatedly deal 85 damage for up to 10 hits after the first hit, the enemy receives an additional 120 bleed damage per second for 3 seconds. Any shield abilities on the target are broken. Uh, this disembowel is the main weapon used in ganking. I, I think you guys have all been probably ganked by now. I know I have many to many times. Uh, the claws are the main weapon used, and I think you guys probably know this ability pretty well by now. Um, they basically come at you and you can't move, you know, for three seconds and it's annoying as hell and they do a lot of damage. Uh, but, you know, that is close and that's the way close rules. So let's go to Black Hands. Uh, another pretty expensive item once you get up there in the tiers, but very, very, very strong for 2v2 Hellgates as well uh, as Death Givers can be. Um, it dev devastating Strike is the E on the black hands and it's a two punch combo the first hit removes all positive effects of the enemy and stuns them for 0.89 seconds uh, this is ignoring crowd control resistances and after the stun is over you apply the second hit which knocks the enemy nine meters away first hit deals 150 true damage the second hit deals 480 physical damage um, this is an insane uh, combo by removing you know all positive effects on the enemy and then it stuns them for 0.89 seconds, and you do that much damage. Uh, there's a reason why black hands are used in PvP uh, 2v2 Hellgates all the time, and it's because of the devastating strike. Now let's look at the uh, dagger, adept dagger. Uh, this is one that's not used very often, but the ability can be used for ganking if you would like to use it for ganking. It applies a forbidden poison to your weapon while active. Every normal attack inflicts an additional 160 magic damage and also increases your attack speed by 12% and your move speed by 35% for one second. And you can see why that would be strong. Uh, you have insane movement and you do bleed. Um, or not bleed, but you know we're getting to that down here. So the poison haze emitting from your weapon will reduce your max and current health by 3% every second. The longer the poison stays active, the more it will reduce your max health. So, uh, not very many people use poison coating, but you know, if you're going to go about it, you go about it and do you. Uh, we're going to now look at the dagger pair. Uh, the dagger pair can be very strong uh, if used correctly, but not too many people also use this. It's really about the artifact daggers. If you're going to level daggers, I suggest leveling the artifact daggers for the uh, blood, blood letter uh, death givers and the black hands. Um, Slit Throw. Deals very high physical damage. This spell consumes all charges of Sunder Armor or Assassin Spirit, increasing total damage based on the number consumed. 75% of the damage will be dealt instantly, and the remaining 25% as bleed over time. So, you can tell that would be strong, and you can look at the charges, damages there. Zero charges, 355. One charge, 568. Two charge, 852. Three charge, 1207. Um, and then you obviously have the same passives as all the other... Uh, daggers and now last but not least uh, we have the probably most used uh, dagger in the game uh, by gatherers and PVPers all around the Albion online universe we have the blood letter uh, the blood letter is one of the strongest because of it has the you know the dash and everything but then it also has the lunging stab which you can also use as an escape tool or a finisher so dashes to a ground target location dealing physical damage to anyone in the way uh, this means that it can actually you know you can get a two for one you can get a collateral kill here or you can get you know damage on five enemies at a time if they're all in the path so that's very strong about it and the damage amount depends on each enemy's remaining health so if it's above 40 percent health on the enemy you only do 418 per 418 damage which is not very good but if they're below 40 percent health you'll do 900 damage and that's going to obviously advance like all the other ones with uh, the higher tier so you become a pretty hardcore execution uh, ability right here with the lunging stabs uh, the, th the cooldown is only 30 seconds but if you hit at least one enemy below 40 percent health uh, shortens all your cooldowns by 10, 10 seconds which is very very strong um, it used to be even stronger but they did nerf it uh, but like I said blood is very very strong 
And all these daggers are actually very, very strong in the right place or the right hands. So you can make any of them work. And I really do, uh, if you guys do choose to level daggers, I really think you should, you know, take a good uh, idea or guess of what you're going to be wanting to do with the dagger. And, you know, if you're going to want to gank, you know, Depth Claws or uh, Blood Letter might be the best bet. Uh, Claws probably is the best bet. But if you're wanting to, you know, PvP or maybe even 5v5, if you're looking to 5v5, Death Givers are probably your best bet. Maybe, maybe Blood Letter and maybe, maybe Black Hands. But I would suggest probably Death Givers for 5v5. And if you're looking to 2v2, uh, you could get away with um, almost any of these, to be honest. You could probably get away with almost any of these. Uh, the Adept Dagger is not my favorite weapon. It's not the strongest, so I would put that down here. But these all have a chance at 2v2, at least. So, um I hope you guys did like the uh, dagger explanations here. Um, I was trying to go over all of them a little bit today as, you know, I'm starting to level that blood letter and I'm going to have a 2v2 Hellgate build coming out here shortly for you guys. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we have a lot of good kills and, you know, pretty, pretty insane 2v2 Hellgate builds going on. So I do hope you guys like this video. And if you do like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe and comment below if you guys have any more opinions on what you guys want me to go over next. I know there's a lot of weapons out there, a lot of different kind of armors, and a lot of different kind of shoes, a lot of different kind of helmets, a lot of different kind of capes. Let me know what you guys want me to go over next, and I will go over it and explain where each item is used and what's the purpose really. And, you know, I hope this does help you guys out that are struggling to find out what you guys want to do in Albion Online with the dagger. So I'll see you guys next time. This is Graphic. Peace.